Girl, I guess the coronavirus must have hit Greece first because it had done got in model of mine infected that bitch and had her over there stealing out the market. Nessa, girl, did you get into them housewives? Let's talk about it. Girl, I said, listen, since everybody job fucked up and everybody gonna be sitting there on board with nothing to do with their badass kids running around, I might as well sit at home and be quarantined right along with y'all ass and watch and comment on every little thing that happened in the world so we could talk about it. That being said, I'm talking about all the love and hip hops. I'ma call y'all about Andrew Gillum. I'ma call y'all about the coronavirus, but right now we finna talk about Marlo thieving ass stealing out the people shop in the Greek in the Greek flea market they said what don't come out in the wash will show come out in the rinse and I told y'all she was boosting you know that bitch got a problem when you boosting internationally and you know the bitch evading the government as well you know good and goddamn well when Marlo got back to the states she didn't declare that damn scarf or whatever the fuck she stole out the market and the sad part is you got the money what you riding there stealing out the people shop for and you got the money okay Anyway, before we get down to Marlo stealing at the flea market, let's just start with the episode opened up in Greece. The episode opened up in Greece and Candy talking about hiring Shadina down to her restaurant or whatever the case may be. Shadina is the surrogate of the baby that she and Tyler had, their, their daughter. I personally think it is a bad idea. I think that there is a reason that historically people sever ties with their surrogate and it's because emotionally it blurs a whole lot of lines. At the beginning of Candy's surrogacy process, she was already feeling slightly insecure about not carrying the child, saying I guess now she got a baby mama and Bravo Andy had to step in and say that that was still your baby, this, that, and the third. And I wonder what happens as this woman is taking care of your business and she's she's integrated into your life and then let's just say the new little baby falls down and Shadina happens to be present and you see Shadina over there consoling the child or putting first aid on the child's knee what that would do to you mentally and emotionally I think that it's all fine and well to send Shadina as a Christmas card every now and again I think it's all fine and well to invite Shadina to an occasional party now again perhaps the child's birthday party or you and Tara's anniversary party, but to, sh to work Shadina into your everyday equation, I just, I just don't think that there's any very good precedence for that, and I think that's something that you should leave alone. Let's just, put, let's just put the shit on the line, okay? Going to Kenya and Cynthia. Kenya went out her way to embarrass Cynthia. There is no room for interpretation. That is finite absolute, and it's absolute as two plus two equals four. Kenya went out, first of all, there is nothing funny about embarrassing your friends publicly, okay? There's one thing to throw shade. Ooh, girl, you got your titties out. That's shade. Ooh, girl, you got your little titties. That's, that's fun shade. There is another to make somebody look incompetent about the business that they own on pu in public and more so on camera. Kenya damn near had a coronary when Tanya did that whole thing with that wig talking about it ruined, it could ruin her business, it could ruin her business. Let me ask you this, Kenya. Riddle me this. I'm a consumer, okay? I'm a wine connoisseur. If I feel like the place where I'm going to go purchase wine don't know shit about wine, then what I want to go to that business. Based on what you, what you did, it left me as the consumer feeling like Cynthia got a cornucopia of gas station wine up at her damn restaurant and she wouldn't know good from bad or anything in between. So why the fuck would I even want to waste my time going up to the Bailey wine cellar? That is the potential damage that your so-called fun shade did. And the gag is, after she ignored you the first time, the second time, you kept going, you kept going. Then you, you, you basically, you 
You were a wine snob and you wine shamed her because you went out of your way to ask her questions that she clearly did not know the answers to. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, you know, Kenya, I don't know. I, I Something about the chemical composition of hair products tells me that you don't know either. If I was a scientist that sat in the lab at Glasgow Smith Klein Beckham or uh, girl, I just fucked the people name all the way up. Procter and Gamble, Johnson and Johnson, Kimberly Klein. If I was one of those and I was to say to you, so what is the perfect combination of alkaline versus peroxide and molecules number three that you should have in an edge control to stimulate growth from the follicle perspective and not just on the surface? You would be sitting there looking baffled as fuck. Now, will I say this? From this moment on, Cynthia, I hope when you got your ass back to the U.S., you took a damn Rosetta Stone for wine or your ass went to a damn wine tasting because here's what Kenya exposed about your situation, Cynthia. And since you my girl and I love you to death, if you or Mal is standing behind that counter at that damn restaurant, I should be able to walk up to you and say, which one of these wines or rosés or whatever would, would I pair perfectly with a fish or a salmon dish that I'm preparing to cook? And you need to be able to rattle that shit off, uh, 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 you know, first class. And it did show a weakness. But Kenya, you were wrong for exposing your friend's weakness publicly for a laugh that shit was just not cool and as far as it being apples to oranges as a, as it relates to what tanya did to you it's the same exact thing and it's proof that you felt the way about your shady ass antics because you was mad about the producers asking you those questions kenya you were wrong and it was not funny it felt as if you were going out of your way to dig at that lady for some damn reason that's unapparent to us but i guess we'll find out as the season uh comes to a to an end um, Kenya, while we on you, I want to know what gives you the right, the mitigated gall or the audacity to talk to Portia the way you did somebody. Damn, you ain't even supposed to be touching these people's shit. D just disrespectful to their culture. Act like you've been somewhere before. Who are you talking to? Like, girl, you was in a half an episode of Waiting to Exhale and you did a couple of piece of cameos on some UPN sitcoms and now you so cultured? Girl, based on the, the condition of them from my countertops from your house in L.A., you wasn't too damn culture. You hadn't been around the world of I, 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 because, bitch, we didn't see no Italian marble. Hell, we ain't seen no Miami marble in that bitch, but yet you so damn culture. Girl, get the entire fuck up out of here and stop acting like you so grandiose and better than now. Smashing plates. Somebody needed to smash Kenya damn face, but I did like them seeing the smashing the plates or whatever the case may be and going on about their passions. Um, Tanya and Portia, after they smashed place, they went back to Cynthia's room and they was talking to Cynthia about Kenya's uh, disrespect. Here's the thing, right? It goes without saying that Cynthia is too nice, right? Cynthia is too nice because she's one of those people who values her peace over the bullshit. So whereas opposed, the rest of the girls will pop off for every little thing. King Cynthia is willing to overlook things to keep the peace. She's done it time and time again with Nene and she's doing it now with Cynthia. That's why I was so bothered and we'll talk about it later at the end scene when Nene was like, but if it was me, all hell would have broke loose. But she's done it with you, Nene, for years. And it's so funny how Nene can see and call Cynthia Kenya's puppet, but she had a problem with it when Kenya had this, when she had the same influence over Cynthia that Kenya now seems to have and she couldn't see it. All of a sudden, Cynthia's her own woman, so on and so forth. Um, that bus ride over, when they told Marlo they had found an old man for her, I fell out laughing. Now, I rarely, I rarely, rarely agree with Marlo Hampton, but I will say one thing. Candy had a testimony, one of which Todd was in the 100,000 area and together they made millions. And I'm of the firm belief that there's only but so far you can go by yourself and that they do make a good couple business wise. I agree with Marlo. Marlo is already established to a certain point and she said, listen, y'all, I think that boat has sailed for me. I am 43. I don't have the time 
for somebody to come into my life and we have to build together. I, Marlo's more on some, bitch, this what I got, this what you got, let's put the shit together and live happily ever after a ride off into the sunshine. I'm with Marlo on that. There's a certain age where building becomes just a thing of the past. Portia got time to build. Okay? Portia about the only... <laughs> the rest... <laughs> Listen, in three more years, ain't nobody on that damn bus gonna need no tampon or no damn maxi pad. Portia the only goddamn one that got time to build anything. That goes for family, relationship, businesses, and anything in between. The rest of them hoes is more so geared. The, the, listen, the rest of them hoes on that bus will be getting their AARP uh, advertisements pretty soon in the junk mail, quiet as it's kept. Um, when they got to the wine tasting, you know, you can always tell when people have done wrong by the way they try to clean shit up. You know, Kenya was like, I'm gonna buy her a couple bottles of wine, whatever the case may be. Bitch, you should have bought her the whole goddamn wine billiard the way you embarrassed her. And I'm sorry, once again, you can't fucking do wrong to people and just think that some blanket apology or the fact that I bought some wine is gonna make up for it. Cause I can already tell you now, at the reunion, Kenya's going to be, oh, it was just a joke and I was playing. I even bought wine for you to bring back to your cellar. I tried to educate you. I tried to get you some good wines for you to be able to sell anything. I tried to help your business. That's the, that's the Kenya is such a one-trick pony when it comes to that bullshit. Write me down in history. I've already called it. That is what is going to happen. Uh, Portia and Nene go off and apologize and cry. So I'm going to tell you something. It's always a good thing when adults can put aside their differences, right? And I'm glad that they did, and I never wanna be regarded as one of those people that's trying to block two people from being friends when they love each other, right? But it's another thing when you've seen this bullshit before. You know what I'm saying? And as the saying goes, an apology without change behavior is manipulation. I just hope it lasts. Like, and here's what we know. Two things can exist in the same space, right? Two things can be true. Yes, they can love each other when they love each other and feel sisterly. And yes, the sisterly relationship can be toxic. And both can live and exist in the same house at the same damn time. We have seen this before with Nene. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be a Nene hater. I'm not trying to give her any extra sugar that I don't give the rest of the girls. But it feels like majority of the volatility that comes in Nene's relationships comes from her side. Now listen, I'm gonna give her an excuse and I'm gonna give her a pass when it comes to the Greg stuff. But we cannot negate the fact that Greg is not where this volatile behavior has started from. It has just been a historic thing. Now look, I will say this. Candy saw through the bullshit, right? Or Candy was feeling like my earlier statement, like here we go with this shit again. However, Candy, your facial expressions as it related to them making up looked so strong that it did somewhat make you make you look like you had a vested interest in them not being friends. You know what I'm saying? But I know Candy well enough to know that what she was thinking was, here we go again with this bullshit. We don't seen this shit before. And as bad as this bitch talked about you, I'm surprised you wouldn't have talked to her again. But we also know that Candy asked a whole of grudge from here into goddamn neverwhere. Because look, here's the thing. Enough years have passed for Phaedra Parts to come back. I'm just saying, you ain't got to sit down with her, but enough years have passed for Phaedra to be able to come back and fool la la with the damn girls because quiet as it's kept, it's looking like she is the only one who can tame that damn Kenya more. Um, Kenya did make a very valid point, okay? And it's rare that I agree with Kenya. When they were sitting at the table and Portia was like, me and Tanya want to plan this ruins party, this powwow for, for us to all put things out on the table and leave it here. Kenya made a very valid point. Y'all made up in private, but now all of a sudden y'all want us to do our shit in public. This is a recipe for disaster. And she was absolutely right. And it goes against what they say, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Like Portia, I did find it kind of fucked up that you and Nene were so apprehensive about sharing with the girls what y'all talked about, though it was y'all's private business. And part of the 
reason why I think that y'all were apprehensive about sharing the shit is because y'all knew everybody was gonna look at y'all like this is some damn bullshit and they was gonna call y'all on y'all shit. Candy sitting there in her mind like, bitch, I know all the private conversations and all the shit you don't say about Nene and Cynthia and the other ones over there like, Nene, I know all the shit you don't say about Portia. Now y'all hoes, bosom birdies. Ain't this some damn bullshit? So listen, I, I, I'm, I'm with them on the whole, here we go with this and it look a little sketchy and I'm just here to hold on till y'all holes fall out again. I will say this, I'm tired of the makeup, the breakup. This shit is worse than an abusive relationship between a drug dealer and his girlfriend that wear Fendi, Prada, Dolce Gabbana and steal out of markets like Marlo. It's just too much, it's too much. It is too much. But is it me or was Nene drunk down to that ruins party? Now, you know, if, if that wasn't antagonizing behavior at its finest, her, you know, looking like she was going to throw that popcorn at Kenya and her disproportionate response to some of the stuff Kenya was saying, then I don't know. I'm going to have to blame it on the a a a a alcohol, but let's lay some shit on the line, right? I think the fundamental issue with Nene and Kenya is that for what it's worth, Nene was the undisputed, invisible queen of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Then you have Kenya, who came along and challenged that invisible position, and it left Nene feeling the kind of way, and it fueled Kenya because Kenya was like, bitch, I'm not finna sign up and volunteer to be any bitch's minion. If anything, I'm gonna be a queen. Whereas I think the rest of the ladies are somewhat content playing their part and letting Nene be the president, the captain, the team leader of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I mean, let's face it, when you watch Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the first name that came to mind was Jocelyn Hernandez. When you watched Basketball Wives, the first name that come to line is Evelyn Lozada. When you watch Real Housewives of Jersey, the first name was Teresa Judice. When you watch Real House of Atlanta, the first name that comes to mind is Nene Leakes. You see what I'm saying? Granted, it may be an invisible title. It may not even hold any weight, but there is a certain level of popularity that one person holds that makes them stick out. And I think that Nene's issue with Kenya is that Kenya never respected the queen when she saw him, bitch. Y'all remember what Rochelle said, what time you get off work, bitch? What time you get off work? Y'all need to teach this bitch how to be customer service. Now respect the queen when you see him, bitch. Kenya ain't never respect the queen when she saw him, bitch. But you gotta understand, Kenya bills was backed up, Nene, okay? Kenya ain't worked since waiting to exhale. So listen, this woman wasn't fighting for your position. She was fighting for her life. She was fighting for her credit, okay? Bitch, when that credit on the line and you lose all your borrowing power, you do what you got to do to survive. And that's what that lady was doing. Now look, I do think it's low to have told Kenya that's why your husband leaving you this, that, and the third. But then again, on the flip side of things, you know what, as much low down, underhanded, passive aggressive shit that Kenya does, it makes it hard to have any sympathy for Kenya when somebody actually does do something wrong to her. It makes you feel like, bitch, you deserve it. That shit you did to Tanya, that, that response was completely disproportionate. You tried to embarrass somebody once again and tear up that lady damn family. It just was not cool. So I'm not gonna lie to you, Kenya, as the viewer, and as much as your point is valid, that when people do shit to you, nobody says nothing, we don't say anything because it makes us feel vindicated for all the other bullshit that you do to people. Low key, it make us say goody for you, bitch. Nan, any boo boo. And with that being said, that's all I got, ain't got no more. Y'all hoes, be able to sh be sure to like and subscribe and share this video if y'all want me to sit in this house and quarantine with y'all, corona y'all, and keep y'all ass entertained uh, for shit for the next three, six, eight, twelve weeks or whatever while Comcast uh, ain't, ain't cutting with shit. Y'all might not watch me since Comcast ain't cutting your cable and shit off. Nevertheless, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll call you later, girl. Bye. And make sure you keep Marlo Hampton from your store because the bitch still.